คุณกำลังฟังสถานีวิทยุ AM 1575กิโลเฮิรตซ์สรารมเรดิโอวิทยุการทูตเพื่อประชาชนเชื่อมไทยสู่โลกเชื่อมโลกสู่ไทยสวัสดีครับ and welcome back to Inside MFA with me เสถัตพิญโยเทโชต Inside MFA on air every Friday morning from 6 to 6:30 a.m. So be sure to tune in to AM 1575 kilohertz to Saranom Radio, especially on Fridays. With Inside MFA, you'll be surely informed of the current happenings and activities of the MFA Thailand. In which for today's session will be my recap summary of the past activities and happenings of the MFA Thailand. Due to that, there wasn't a press briefing last week. So here's what has happened since 19 July. First. Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs visit to New York to attend HLPF 2024 and other meetings. Second, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs discusses with Egyptian Red Crescent and donate in supporting humanitarian assistance operation. Third, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs discusses with Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel seeking support for release of Thai hostages and bilateral cooperation. Fourth. Deputy Permanent Secretary of Foreign Affairs lead a delegation from the Thai private sector to pay a courtesy call on the Deputy Minister of Investment, Industry, and the Trade of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Fifth, opening remarks of Minister of Foreign Affairs at Saudi Thai Investment Forum on the 14th of July, 2024, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So let's start with the first topic today. Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs visit to New York to attend HLPF 2024 and other meetings. During the 15th to 17th July 2024, HE Mr. Rust Jali Chandra, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, visited New York to participate in the ministerial segment of the High Level Political Forum or HLPF on Sustainable Development 2024, held under the auspices of the Economic and Social Council, or ECOSOC, at the United Nations headquarters. Vice Minister Russ attended the opening of the HLPF ministerial segment at which high-level opening remarks were delivered by HE Mr. Denis Francis, President of the 78th Session of the UN General Assembly, and HE Ms. Paula Narvaz, President of ECOSOC. On 16 July 2024, the Vice Minister delivered a statement emphasizing Thailand's commitment to implementing the 2030 Agenda and the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, based on the Sufficiency Economy Philosophy or SEP and the BCG Economy Model. He also noted that the SDGs should be the main focus of the upcoming Summit for the Future this September. The Vice Minister took part in two UN Security Council or UNSC open debates. On 16 July 2024, he delivered a statement on multilateral cooperation in the interest of a more just, diplomatic and sustainable world order, reiterating Thailand's commitment to multilateralism and the UN at the core, and offered views on strengthening and improving the workings of the UN. Then on 17th of July 2024, Vice Minister Russ delivered a statement on the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question, where he expressed Thailand's grave concern towards the situation in Gaza, especially the deteriorating humanitarian situation, and repeated Thailand's call for an immediate, full, and complete ceasefire, calling for the implementation of relevant UNSC resolutions in particular, Resolutions 2735, 2024, and adherence to international law. The Vice Minister again pleaded for the release of all hostages, which include Thai nationals, praising and expressing support for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near West, or UNRWA. He concluded by calling for genuine dialogue towards peace based on the two-state solution. While on the New York, the Vice Minister also held bilateral engagements, including on the 16th of July 2024, where he met with Mr. Guy Ryder, 
UN Under Secretary General for Policy and reaffirmed Thailand's support for the multilateral system and international cooperation to achieve the SDGs. He also reaffirmed Thailand's willingness to participate actively in the summit in the future and discussed enhancing Thailand's cooperation with the UN, especially in regard to having more Thai nationals working in international organizations. On the same day, Vice Minister Russ met with the HE Dr. Kyung Wa Kang, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Asia Society and former Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea. They discussed promoting further cooperation between Thailand and the Asia Society, a not-for-profit think tank that promotes understanding and exchange between the United States and Asia-Pacific. Also, on the 15th of July 2024, the Vice Minister met briefly with H.E. Mr. Saliam Se Komasit, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Lao Peaceful Democratic Republic before the presentation of Laos PDR's Voluntary National Review or VNR, ASEAN's only VNR during HLPF 2024. On this occasion, Vice Minister Russ also met with officials from the Permanent Mission of Thailand to the United Nations and the Royal Thai Consulate General New York. He was briefed by the Permanent Mission on activities within the UN framework, especially Thailand's candidature for the UN Human Rights Council 2025-2027. to While at the Consulate General, he discussed the protection of Thai nationals and support for Thai communities within its consular area. So the next second topic is Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs discussed with Egyptian Red Crescent and donates in supporting humanitarian assistance operation. On 21st of July 2024, H.E. Mr. Ras Jalin Chandra, Vice Minister of the Foreign Affairs, met with Dr. Amal Imam, Acting Chief Executive Officer, Egyptian Red Crescent or ERC, to discuss works and operations of the ERC and also be the representative of the Royal Thai government to donate 100,000 USD or 4,807,000 Egyptian pounds for humanitarian assistance missions, which is the first time the Thai government provides donation to the ERC. The ERC working on the principle of impartiality and being politically neutral is Egypt's main authority to provide humanitarian assistance to people in Egypt and other countries including Gaza. The ERC has received assistance from 49 countries so far. The Vice Minister commended ERC's noble works and hope Thailand's donation will help further support dedicated works of the ERC and would be delighted to see a greater cooperation between the ERC and the Thai Red Cross in the near future. The third topic, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs discusses with Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel seeking support for the release of Thai hostages and bilateral cooperation. On 22nd of July 2024, H.E. Mr. Rastelin Chandra, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, met with Mr. Israel Katz, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel to exchange views on conflict in the Middle East, especially in Gaza, to seek further support on the release of six Thai hostages held in Gaza. The Israel Foreign Minister reassured that the release of all hostages has always been a top priority for Israel. Both sides also congratulate the commemoration of the 70th anniversary of diplomatic relations between two countries this year and discuss cooperation on potential aspects including labor, education, agriculture, construction, amongst others. The fourth topic. Deputy Permanent Secretary of Foreign Affairs lead a delegation from the Thai private sector to pay a courtesy call on the Deputy Minister of Investment, Industry and the Trade of Republic of Ukebestan. On 19th of July 2024, H.E. Ms. Busadi Santipitak Department Permanent Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Thailand led a delegation comprising of representatives from seven Thai companies from various sectors such as modern trade, logistics, and agribusiness to the Republic of Uzbekistan to explore potential business opportunities. The Thai delegation paid a courtesy call on H.E. Mr. 
Chokhu Gulamov, Deputy Minister of Investment, Industry and Trade, received a comprehensive briefing on economy and investment direction in Uzbekistan. Both sides exchanged views on the ways to elevate economic cooperation, especially in trade, investment, and tourism between the two countries. The Deputy Permanent Secretary highlighted the purpose of the visit in exploring businesses, opportunities, and potentials for Thai businesses in Uzbekistan, and the need to promote more active engagement between the Thai and Uzbek private sectors post-COVID-19. Furthermore, the promotion of people-to-people contacts was discussed with the aim of fostering close ties between the two countries, as Thailand has granted the 60-day visa exemption for the Uzbek nationals from 15th July 2024 onwards. The Deputy Minister of Investment, Industry and Trade also expressed interest in working with the Thai side in the areas of agriculture, textiles and tourism. Uzbekistan is Thailand's second largest trading partner in Central Asia with immense support and potential due to its fast-growing economy and the largest population in Central Asia with approximately 35.6 million people. Last year, bilateral trade between the two countries recorded an increase of 93% from the previous year. Thailand views Uzbekistan as a gateway to Central Asia, while Thailand can serve as a gateway for Uzbekistan to Southeast Asia region. And the final topic for today is regards the opening remarks of the Minister of Foreign Affairs at Saudi Thai Investment Forum on 14th of July 2024, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. His Excellency Khalid Afali, Minister of Investment of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Let's hear it. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. It is a great pleasure to once again be back in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a thriving market, an enduring partner, and a dear friend. Today, I am especially pleased and honored to join you in celebrating the inauguration of Thailand's Board of Investment Office here in Riyadh. This inauguration ceremony is not an isolated milestone in the sea of our accomplishments between our two countries over the past two years. It stands as a testament of our continued commitment and determination to transform our Thai-Saudi friendship into partnership for prosperity according to the missions of our two leaders. Indeed, much has been done in these past two years to bridge the gap and strengthen the engagement between our two kingdoms and people. Our flourishing cooperation has already spanned across various fields and sectors. Allow me to highlight just a few of our collective successes thus far, as well as suggest key areas where we can work together, particularly on trade and investment, to forge an even more robust cooperation, ensuring an even stronger partnership in the years to come. The frequent exchange of high-level visits and meeting in various forums, most recently at the Asian GCC Summit in October 2023, which my Prime Minister attended, reflects the continued importance we attach to each other at the highest level. In this regard, I look forward to welcoming the Saudi delegation to Bangkok later this year for the inaugural Saudi Thai Coordination Council. This meeting will constitute another important driving force in propelling our relations toward our five encompassing pillars of cooperation. On the economic front, Thailand views Saudi Arabia as a vital trading partner for our region and beyond. I am pleased to note that last year alone, bilateral trade between Thailand and Saudi Arabia reached new heights, amounting to 8.8 billion USD, consisting of nearly 22% of Thailand's total trade within the Middle East. I am certain that this impressive number will certainly be boosted even further by the recent bilateral memorandum of understanding between Thailand's Ministry of Commerce and the General Authority of Foreign Trade of Saudi Arabia. The agreement also sends a strong signal for our collective commitment and our government's decision to continue exploring ways and means to facilitate trade and economic cooperation. While our volume continues to expand and our cooperation 
in other fields continue to deepen, we keenly look forward to capitalizing on this momentum even further, especially through discussing with the possibility of the regional free trade agreement with the Gulf Cooperation Council. This agreement not only reflects our shared resolve in promoting increased trade and investment, but our mutual understanding in work to unlock more even doors and progress and open even more channels of opportunities for both our countries and our regions. On investment, I am pleased to note that our joint efforts on investment promotion are making strong headways. In 2022, Thailand and Saudi Arabia signed the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation of the Promotion of Direct Investment, which has served as a solid platform to ease and facilitate investments, especially on our already agreed upon joint investment initiatives in finance, digital, and creative industries. Beyond our government-to-government cooperation, our private sector cooperation has also been equally vibrant and dynamic. In particular, we are excited to highlight the success of last year's international mega fair, led by the Thai Chamber of Commerce, which saw over 30 Thai businesses showcasing more than 1,000 products from 200 brands notably promoting Thailand in Saudi Arabia. Building on this success, we are pleased to announce the International Mega Fair 2024 in Riyadh, scheduled for November 2024. This year's event will focus on promoting trade in an array of high potential sectors and will showcase Thailand's diverse and innovative industries, ranging from construction, materials, hospitalities to defense technologies, amongst others. I am sure that our investment representatives present here today stand ready to closely work with our Saudi counterparts going forward. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 remains one of the benchmark strategies for our holistic country-wide reform agenda. Thailand stands ready to align our bilateral investment strategies to complement that of Saudi Arabia's. For your prosperity and successes can only complement ours, whether it be through our Ignite Thailand vision, which aims to establish Thailand as a hub in eight key areas, or through our biocircular green economy agenda, to shift forward a clean and sustainable economy. There are endless opportunities for us to explore and potentials for us to fulfill. Of course, we both, our nation, are located strategically at the crossroads of continents. We recognize that Connectivity and efficiency are part and parcel of any feasible development strategy. This is why, as a part of our plan, Thailand launched a flagship land bridge project, which will connect the Gulf of Thailand with the Andaman Sea and the Indian Ocean. This bold initiative will reduce commuting time and costs by 15%. Thailand is open for businesses, and this mega-project working with our aforementioned Strategy will position Thailand much like Saudi Arabia as a vibrant, thriving, and ambitious hub for our respective regions as a whole. While Thailand is invested in continuing to look to Saudi Arabia for new possibilities, our positioning will also equally offer prime opportunities for Saudi investors to play a role in Thailand's key industries and infrastructure and take part in the development of a prosperous future together. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, If the past two years are any indication of all the milestones we have achieved together ever since the normalization of our diplomatic relations, I am excited to imagine what we can accomplish together in all the years ahead. And although I have been in Riyadh for only just a few days, I have learned of a famous Arabic idiom loosely translated to, those who strive shall find. So going forward, let us strive together to find more wellsprings of opportunities Let us strive together to open more doors of possibilities as we shall strive together to find an oasis of a partnership for prosperity in the relations between our two kingdoms. Thank you very much. Shukran. Well, that's only some activities and works that the MFA Thailand has done during these past weeks. There's actually much more, but with a time limit, this is all I'll be informing you all today for today's session. It has been a great time for me with the Inside MFA radio sessions. But unfortunately, this will be my last recording as my time is up for my internship here at the MFA Thailand. 
It has been a wonderful journey and experience working professionally with the MFA Thailand, especially at the Department of Information. This experience has taught me many things about myself and improved my working capabilities in many ways I didn't think I was going to be able to do. I'll surely miss my time and session here at Salanom Radio, and will cherish my experience here forever. On behalf of myself and other internship students for the MFA internship program, we are grateful for this internship opportunity, and in the future, we will surely adapt our experience and use it to our advantages in all ways and all kinds of path we are walking on towards the future. We truly thank you to all the staff, diplomats, and seniors within the MFA Thailand. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for this amazing experience. On a lighter note, I of course end the session with an international relations quote, this time from myself. I say, the MFA Thailand is not only working towards cooperations among internationals, but also cooperations and connections among Thai people themselves. MFA Thailand is not just an organization, but also is another one genomic working family. This is me signing off. I hope you all had a great time with me while it did last. I'll surely miss my Friday recording sessions for sure. My one final time signing off. This is me. I'm Seth Hatpin, your teacher. สวัสดีครับ